Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Sarah and this is my friend Brittany. She's co-starring today. And today I'm gonna do a part two on my manager horror stories, but I'm actually gonna be only talking about the one restaurant in my, I think it was customer horror stories and my original manager horror stories video. It's gonna be my job I was at for almost two and a half years that Brittany also worked with me at. So she has some, I guess, stories as well. And we're gonna talk about what she's gonna talk about the guests and managers because she didn't really have any problems with managers unlike me. They liked me. So. I, yeah, they really did. They didn't like me, so which is stupid. I was always on time. I feel like I'm the mean one out of this duo, so I don't know why. <laughs> they just knew that they could get away with, they couldn't be mean to you because you'd be mean back. Yeah, so. that's true. And I never could. So <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, Brittany. <laughs> okay, so there's this one time where I was on to goes and I was closing to goes and we closed in literally a minute <laughs> and um, this guy calls and the host pick it up and then tell me that he wants to place a skill order and I was like e the kitchen literally closes in a minute we close in a minute like I don't know what he wants so I answered the phone and I was like, hi sir, just so you know, like we close in a minute. If you can't get here in a minute, like I, I can't take your order. And he started cussing me out on the phone and calling me not nice names. Um, and he was like, after he finished cussing me out, he's like, I want to speak to a manager. The usual. So I go to where the two managers we had were sitting and I got stuck with a new manager that was there and she pretty much took the guy's order, made me put everything together, made me do all the work for it, and then she kept the tip. She, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, she like kept the tip because I guess he tipped well because he came after we closed or whatever. And I was like, you really gonna make me do all this work for no freaking money. Yeah, and then the fact that she kept your tip, like that's also illegal, I found out after I quit. So managers actually, if you work in the service industry, most of y'all probably know that managers can't take tables and keep the tips. So at my old job, before I worked at my job now, they would, if a manager had to take a table, they would give someone that was doing a good job that night the tip. So what she did was illegal. I like, wish. Are you yeah. kidding me? You're not allowed to. So managers, if you're watching this, any manager, you're, you can go to jail and lose your TABC license apparently for taking money that's not it's yours. It's literally like a $17 tip too. And I'm like, you I can't believe she took it? it. Was it cash? Probably. I think so. But I'm like, yeah, that, that's a little explanation of how our managers were. And I'm sure you got yelled at and you know. Well, she was like, you're gonna take this order and no she's like i don't care if we close in a minute literally and the kitchen was pissed off at me because i had put an order in and they're like why'd you put an order in and i'm like sorry there's nothing i can do go talk to her <laughs> like if i had a choice i wouldn't have put the order in that's, that's another point. thing like remember that one time her and i were both on to go because we used so basically i hosted when i first got hired right which i think i said in my first customer service story time and then she hosted like she came like almost a year and a half later and then her and I became friends and then when her okay this is like my first another red flag with these managers okay so when she first started I was like barely on to goes right mind you I had already been there for over a year and people that had started in May so I started um what was it December of 2016 right I was a junior in high school and girls that started in May of 2016 were already on to goes I'm not gonna so name like, names, but you know who they are. <laughs> and that's okay, you know what, they deserve it, I guess. But I was just kind of pissed, like most people would be, because I needed money too. We were about to graduate. We were juniors, almost seniors. When I met you, I was a senior. Yeah. I was just about to graduate. Like I had a month left of high school. And they would never put me on to goes. And then when they would do it, they would always, I would finally confront them, because everybody was like, confront her. Like my friends that I still have, like confront them. They would always look at me and basically totally 
I guess degrade me and be like, well, I just don't think she can handle it. And they said the same thing to Brittany about me being a server. They did. I remember, cause I asked them like, hey, so when's Sarah gonna serve, you know? And they're like, oh, well, we just don't think she can handle it. Like to goes is already a lot for her. Like, <laughs> and the like, fact that, that like, not. they would put, so these managers would put one of us on to-go's on like a Saturday morning, right? Which you normally would think, okay, no one's gonna really order to-go's. I shit y'all not, every time I would do to-go Saturday morning, I would be texting you to come in early if you worked at night because I would get so slammed and then they would basically just again belittle me and be like, well, you know, you just can't handle it. That's why we're not gonna make you a server. First of all, you put one person on to-go's and like they would help me. Like I'm not gonna, I almost said her name, but so-and-so would help me in the well, back. Well, I think that's because she like preferred to be on to-go's. So she knew, or in her mind, you couldn't handle it. So she's like, let me just hop on and do it for her, you know? Exactly. And because it's like, she can't handle it. And that's messed up. Like, if you're when if you're a manager or a boss, wherever, people thrive better when you're being positive toward them. So my job now, they help you, mm -hmm. even if you mess up on something. And I don't want to. I don't serve anymore. Obviously, I'll see my corporate video. But like, they're always trying to build you up, and I do so much better. I don't have to worry about being belittled. If I mess something up, they tell me and they ask me if I need help, if I needed like assistance, why I confuse something, you know? They're not like, well, um, you're not gonna get moved up because you just can't handle it. Like, what is that? Yeah. And I already got moved up. <laughs> Even in my current job, they're like, you need help? Let us know, we'll help you. Just don't be like that manager. And they would do that all the time. Like I said, they never would talk back to Brittany because I think Brittany just had that, she has that personality to her like, you just, you don't mess well, up Brittany. <laughs> people know, like if you're gonna talk back to me, nine times out of 10, I will throw it right back at you. And I, I, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I'm not able to do that. Like she would literally see the managers being rude to me at this restaurant and I would probably just usually stand there and be like, my face would probably turn red because I'd be embarrassed. But and then she'd come <laughs> complain to me later. Or cry, like there was a night where Oh my gosh, I forgot about this. So I was it, I was on to go, right? And it was my very first day. So I was done training and they put me on a Friday night, mm. which kind of makes you think that you're like doing a good job. But in reality, if you worked at this restaurant and you got, if you're watching this and you used to work with me, you obviously know how busy it got here. But like I got put on and there was maybe like four of us. And there was this kid, by the way, that was super rude. And of course he was working with me that day. And I just was like freaking out. I didn't know the menu really well because they didn't teach me. Mm -hmm. Like they did not teach the host really the menu at all and they would just throw you on to goes, which why? So regardless, I was freaking out and they put me up front. Why would so you put me up front? Put me in the back. Especially if you don't know the menu. Right. You have to take everyone's order. So then you need to know the menu to know what's supposed to go with what. Like. It just didn't make sense. And then I messed up this guy's order so bad. Like it was really bad. I will admit to that. He ordered these like appetizers and I messed them up because he wasn't being clear on the phone and I didn't know the menu. And then the manager storms into the to-go shack and goes, Sarah, um, you need to go up and just seat. Just like that. Like not even be like, hey, like a good manager. Are you okay? Like, do you need help? Hey, why don't you go take a breather and go seat people for a little bit, go to the bathroom. She was just like, no, you need to go see. And I literally like was just standing there in shock. And there was guests in the to-go room. Why? <laughs> like, why? Why would you do that to someone? And they I really didn't, know what didn't to do. care like no. about embarrassing you in front of guests. No. Like if you're pissing them off, as a, it's it didn't matter. And I started bawling my eyes out. I walked away and by this point, my face was beet red. I still remember this day. I was so embarrassed that all the embarrassment just went to my face. Mm -hmm. And I stormed up to the front host stand. And it was really busy, by the way. Like I said, it was a Friday night. And all the hosts were like, what's wrong? Cause they could tell like my face was like so red. And I had like friends there at the time. So they were like, are you okay? And I literally went into the host and there was like little steps to go up. And I just like crouched down and just lost it. And that's how you know you're low key, just your mental health is just trash because of where you look, where you work, not look. <laughs> it's just like managers, I don't think like understand how what they say and how they like treat you affects your work life. 
Exactly. Well, they didn't understand. Some managers do. We're not saying not all managers do, obviously. But they didn't understand. They probably still don't, honestly. The way we still hear stories about it. But I was bawling my eyes out. And then at the end of the night, like, I get the rush. You know, they really couldn't talk to me or they didn't really care. If they really cared, they probably would have talked to me. But I finally, I just went to the bathroom. I didn't care. I was not going to see. I was just over it. Like, I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. I was just like, no, like, I don't want to see. Mm -hmm. There was guests looking at me. They, honestly, if you're seeing a host ball her eyes out, you obviously, or a server, you're like, what is going on? When any of your workers, like, and they're crying, something's obviously wrong. Exactly. So maybe you should get off your high horse and be like, what's wrong? What happened? How can I make this better for you? And the GM saw, I almost said his name, the GM saw me crying and just peeked out of the kitchen because I guess people were talking about me, which that's a whole other story. And he just peeked back in the kitchen. Okay, Why? He, he didn't like dealing with issues, either if it was with the guests or with his workers. No, no, like, not at all. He shouldn't have been a GM. He should have been like a kitchen manager. Cause like yeah. he couldn't he couldn't handle it. He, he didn't know how to run a store. And he didn't know how to take care of his employees. Like I don't And someone I, I work with now at my new job trained him how to like work at this place and how to like be a manager at this place. And yeah, he's like one of the the GM of the GM of this new place <laughs> um or the old plate oh my god okay the gm of our place our old store. place yeah. um, <laughs> was like a shit gm just the one before him was okay he was pretty cool actually he went to um a place called lava cantina that's i think in only in texas and oklahoma and that's like down the road so like it wasn't that bad but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember there was this one time, um, I was already on to goes and she wanted to, I think it was your brother's birthday dinner or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot and about this. She wanted to go like obviously spend time with her brother and her family on his birthday, you know? Who lives in Alaska, by the way, and I never see. Just put that up there. And she, I was off this one day and she asked me hey can you cover my shift tonight like I'm sure you offered to take a shift later I'm in the sure. week or something or like in the future whatever and I was like yeah sure like whatever and we told the managers but I guess they didn't like that and so I came in to work for her <laughs> after they denied my shift <laughs> and the manager was like you're not working to go this night She's like, I'm gonna put you up front. I think I was like updating or something, which is where you literally just like update the floor chart yeah. on the computer. And she's like, you're gonna go do that tonight. Uh, we're gonna leave this girl back here by herself. And like, that was it. But to go got so busy, they ended up pulling me to go help this girl because she was, she couldn't handle it. Right. And then they wouldn't let her give me any of the tips from literally half the night that I helped and her. And she made over $100 that night, which is good for her, but Brittany obviously but deserved that she money She offered too. to give me the money. Right. But the managers wouldn't were like it. blocking the heck out of that. They were like, nope, nope, nope. Like, you're not giving her no money. And which is like, stupid. Like, what the hell? I was hell? like, really? Because you pulled me to help here where I was supposed to be anyway uh, to help her because she couldn't handle it because she was by herself and again like that same day my manager called me and again I'm going out with my family I'm already ready to go out and I was like why are you calling me I do believe I said this in my manager horror stories but I'm gonna say it again and she basically punished me and again I was gonna like put this like on the thumbnail these managers would humiliate you I don't know if it was for their own fun like if they got a high off humiliating they acted employees like they were still in high school yeah. Even though they were in their 20s. Like late 20s, at least. Most of them were in their late 20s, yeah. And she was in her early 20s, I believe, or mid 20s or something. And she basically just humiliated me and was like, well, if you don't come in, then you're losing all your to go shifts for two weeks. I'm not going to go into detail of why I needed money because that's like my 
ex-boyfriend's personal life and like my personal life so i don't want to explain that but i really needed money at the time so the fact that you're messing with a almost 19 year old's money who is already struggling and has already talked to you in the office about what's going on in her life and has cried to you about it and you're gonna take my money away because i didn't show up for a shift that you denied when clearly my friend right here was willing to work it and came in then that's your fault and shame on you <laughs> like, i'm like okay as a host at this place you make less than five dollars an hour yeah so as a to-go girl i was making at least five dollars an hour plus whatever tips i was making so one i go into work a certain shift i'm expecting to make a certain amount of money and then you're like nope you're gonna go host which demotes me a couple bucks and i don't get Tips. They would do that a lot, actually. They would, now that I'm thinking about it, they would do that to me like every Sunday. I'm telling you, these managers did not like me. They would claim they liked me when I was starting to quit. And I'm in this like server hostess um, thing on Facebook. And a lot of people were actually saying that managers don't really show you respect in restaurants until you're about to quit. And they're like, oh my God, but you were so great. I'm like, you never act, like they treated me like I was or just unless someone. you put them in, your, in their place and then they're like, well, now like what we can't bully her exactly or they bully you worse just make your life a living hell <laughs> they didn't bully me worse i put them in their place once and that was it i could never and then one time i find that same day they put the girl on the register i do remember i clearly said this in my one video they replaced me from the to-go shifts with the girl that was stealing money from the register yeah and again, the managers wouldn't believe anybody. So many of us were trying to say, this girl stole money, this girl stole money, mm -hmm. but they didn't have any proof. Y'all have cameras. Again, it just shows that they really don't care about their employees, but how, I don't know. It was just a really extremely toxic environment. Honestly, I think this girl had something on the managers. That's why she would never get in trouble for all the crap she was doing. Right. Because yeah, there's cameras in the to-go shack. You can see that she is taking the money but you're obviously not gonna do anything about it because she has something on you. One time that, it's always like the same manager for me. She basically accused me of stealing from the register. Wait, what? She basically, one night I was on to goes again, cause like I said, most of these stories are when I was on to goes. And I was, I ordered food and I paid in cash for my food and it was like an appetizer, right? So maybe went at the discount, it was like six bucks. And I was paying out and I was about to leave and she goes, hey, come here. And I was like, okay, like, what's up? That she's gonna ask me to like take a shift or something, which I probably would have said no. <laughs> but she goes, um, I counted the register last night and um, it was short like $30. Oh, I remember that. It was like on Halloween or something. I remember that. And I was like, okay. Like, I, I just thought, you know, she was warning me maybe about this certain girl that was, you know, stealing. Maybe she was catching on. So I didn't think anything of it. I was like, okay, like, I'm sorry. Like the register is short. And she goes, and you were on to goes yesterday and i was like oh, so was blank the girl's name and she goes well but you were up front and i was like i was first cut so this means that girl closed and so basically i kind of got in her face and i said are you accusing me of stealing from the register right now and Brittany was working up front i'm pretty sure at the host stand that day and I was just like, and she's like, well, no, but like, what happened to the $30? She's like, did you pay for your food? I'm like, and that just pissed me off. After like, I've why, been there for why, two why years. Why would it be her? I've known her for what, three years? Almost three years now. Yeah. Almost four. I'm like, I know Sarah. I don't steal. <laughs> she feels bad when she like. Says no to someone. Literally. I'm like, why would she steal money? How could she keep the, her mouth shut that she stole money? I would probably blab to some. I probably blab to you and someone here, like, knowing that place. And there it was people ridiculous. To everything everywhere. Oh yeah, because we had headsets on too, and sometimes you'd be like leaning and like <laughs> hear what you were saying. But regardless, I was like, you've known me for over two years or almost two years now, and you're accusing me of stealing from your register when supposedly you trust me and you like me. It was just like that place and she could vouch for me that my mental health became absolute dog shit at the end which is why i i would go to work and i would i would see my schedule come out and i would get so angry and my anxiety was just trash because one there was so much toxicness there 
with just the managers. Everything would be your fault. It would never be the guest's fault. Even if the guest was literally throwing a tantrum at the host in. Even if the guest was obviously wrong, it was your fault. Yep. And then they tried to claim they fired Brittany because she had a job at a gym on Halloween and she requested off like a month before that. So like at my gym job, I worked overnights. So I would get my schedule at the beginning of every month. And I told them, I'm like, listen, I cannot work on Halloween because I need to be at my other job by 10 o'clock at night. And if you can't guarantee me out by nine, I can't be there. And I was serving the, at this restaurant at the time. And the manager was like, well, you know, we can't guarantee anything. And I'm like, okay, don't schedule me. So she was like, I'll see what I can do, blah, 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 whatever. So it comes time and they schedule me for like a closing shift. And I was like, and like closers doesn't get out of there until like an hour after close. And she, I'm like, I, I told her, I'm like, hey, I can't, like, I can't work. You know, I can't work. I was trying all week to get someone to pick up my shift, but nobody wanted to because it was Halloween. Everybody right. wanted to go party. <laughs> Pre-COVID. <laughs> and um, she like, she, I had already put my two weeks in at this point. But she was like, well, you need to get it covered or you need to be here. And so Halloween comes around and it's like six o'clock and I'm trying to sleep before my shift so I can at least get, have some sleep before I work all night. And she calls me and she's like, are you still coming in? And I'm like, no. Like I told you. Like I told you a month ago. <laughs> like I'm not coming in and you can't guarantee me out by a certain time so I'm not coming in. And she was like, well, then don't bother coming back at all. And then she hung up. Hey, bye. And I was like, the fuck? Like, <laughs> and so she, so the app that we would use to like look at our schedules, she kicked me out of. Like the day of too. She didn't yeah, even wait. She didn't wait. And like, I think I had like a week left at this point, but I, but she like, she kicked me out of the app. So I couldn't even log in anymore. Um, and I guess, I don't know what she did with all my shifts, but then I kept getting all these texts and stuff from everybody who worked there. I was like, what happened? What happened? And I'm like, she tried to buy me. She doesn't want to listen when I told her my schedule a month in advance. I'm like, I, I got no sympathy for her. I mean, his managers need invalidation so bad to where if you quit, they would have to tell everybody they fired you. Like, are you that insecure about your job that you have to go and tell that you can't own up to your own mistakes is what I'm trying to say. You were in the wrong. Like when I had whole ass food poisoning and you were, you had already, she worked at Disney World at the time and she had just left. So you probably just got to Florida. Was, yeah. We, I remember we had just pulled into Florida when you called me. And I, it was, I believe I do. All, I also said this in my manager horror stories, but regardless, it, it applies. So here we go again. I ate scallops from a really nice restaurant and I was stupid and took them home. It was definitely my fault I got sick, but I reheated them two days later. It was January 19th when this happened and my mom's birthday is on January 17th. So I'm stupid and ate reheated scallops, which now I know. Two days later. Yeah, two days later <laughs> that we're sitting in the fridge. Don't do that. But regardless, it made me really sick and the day of it started to hit me because I'd eaten them for breakfast, like, you know, brunch that morning. And I started to feel really sick. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't feel well. I told my mom, I'm gonna try to call in. Again, they wouldn't let you call in. Like, what? Now with COVID, you you run away when people say they're sick. But back then, of course, you know, you can't call in. The fact that a restaurant doesn't let you call in, like, I'm sick. You want everybody else to get sick? It, did, it made no, and that place was bad. My, almost said my other job's name, but my other, my recent job, for my corporate job wasn't that bad. If you were sick, you didn't come in. That's another thing. Like they were, and they weren't even ever short staffed, really. Like y'all hire people like every week. Staffed. So it was. Just I mean, dumb. their turnaround time was also Horrible. terrible. But regardless, I got sick. I tried to call in. They were like, "Well, you need to be here." And my mom was like, "Honey, just." She was like, "She knew like I was just going downhill. I was just not happy there anymore." She was like, "You know what? She's probably gonna quit anyways." Like, Honey, just don't go in. I went in being the person I am and I was gagging at the smell of food 
one of the guys was like, hey, you can be up front so you don't have to be around food in the back. Cause I was like hovering over the trash can when I went to the back to get like orders because I just could not deal with the smell. Cause I had food poisoning. When, if you've ever had food poisoning, that tends to happen. And I was by myself up front. There was people that kept coming. I was grossing people out because I kept going like, Hoo. and like, they were like, people were like, are you okay, huh? Like I can get my own food. The managers were obviously by watching on the cameras or doing whatever they were doing. And then all of a sudden, so I'll admit to this very proudly. I posted on my Facebook, which I mean, whatever, that managers shouldn't be allowed to let their employees come in when you're sick. And I think it's very, um, something like disrespectful. I, mean, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I quickly deleted it because I was just like, eh, like, I know, like, you're probably not supposed to do that. But honestly, I was just over Let it. me not start drama. Right. I knew I had people from that place on my Facebook. So I was like, eh, whatever. So someone that I actually still have on Facebook, saw it. And she reported me, she was like a, not a supervisor, but what was she, like a team lead or something? Like she, a higher she was up. like the head trainer. Yeah, so like a, basically a higher up server, okay? Which if you work in service industry, you know what that is. So she was a person that pretty much, if someone did that, they, she would report it to the managers. So a snitch, just kidding but not really. <laughs> and she reported me and the, this is where the management went wrong. Okay, but first, she was, this girl was off. Yeah, I forgot to say that. Physically came into the restaurant to tell the managers what she posted. Like, girl, you're nice and all, but what? you really care about this place if, and you're real nosy. If I would never do that, if, even if I didn't like the person, I'll be like, oh well, like I don't care. It's like, just the post, and it's because she probably knew that they were wrong, and it's the simple fact that this company did not like to be wrong. They would actually delete their bad reviews. Um, I found out on Yelp, <laughs> or not Yelp. You can't delete Yelp reviews, but on Google, <laughs> and um, I know it's actually a lot of restaurants do that. That's funny, but. Um, she came in and she was in like her normal clothes. So I was like, why is she here? Like she wasn't on the schedule. Like she wasn't on like the floor chart or anything. So I was like, eh. And she came in through the to-go like room. And I was like, that made, I just like realized that. I was like, she came in through the to-go room and I literally, like, this is me. I'm like, like just like sitting there just feeling so sick and just wanting to leave. The, luckily the host was being nice and they were gonna let me go home first. Um, and I was sitting there like dying. I felt like I was gonna puke, like guests were all around the to-go shack. And I see her come in and I'm like, what is she doing here? But again, I was so sick and out of it. I didn't think anything of it. And all of a sudden- Why would you? She's right. Like, she doesn't seem like that kind of person. Exactly, she didn't. So I was like, okay, like she came in, like maybe she like, struck Holden or something cause it was busy up front too. And I shit y'all not, maybe like a minute later, this, our manager storms into the ghost shack. Again, not caring about any of the guests. Like, y'all wait, like hold up. And she storms in around the corner cause there's like a corner in this room. And there's like a line of guests, right? Like coming out of the to-go shack, right? And the phone is like backed up with orders cause it's just me up there. And she goes, Sarah, come here. Or like something like that. I was like, Sarah, get over here. And I was like, and then I knew. Y'all, I knew, I knew what was going on. Cause like there's, why would she get mad? At first I kind of thought, okay, maybe she's just mad because, oh no, Sarah's sick and we can't take advantage of her anymore. Which is exactly what I was thinking. Cause I was just so like, I was mentally not good. Exactly. If you have to think something like that, you know you're being mentally abused and drained by a person. If you have to start blaming yourself for things, it's just, that's just a whole other story on mental abuse. Yeah. But like, I was like, why is she really just gonna yell at me to go home because I'm sick? Cause whatever, but that shows your character. Even better. She so another thing that she did that I could have reported her to HR for is she pulled me to the back of the kitchen by the um, office. Not in the office because there was actually an employee in there, which was fine. She knew she probably got in trouble for that. And she pulled me back by the dish pit and by like um, where people like would prep, right? So like in the back of the kitchen. And there's still people there. So there's like a cook and then there was like the um, salad, like cold person, you know, at like restaurants, like it's all like the cold mm -hmm. area. There was someone standing right there. 
and she literally <laughs> she pulled out the whole ass like remember when you get hired it, when you get hired at orientation they pulled out the handbook she literally had the whole handbook and was like opened it and like had the page and was all ready to go off on sarah right and meanwhile i'm literally like about to gag i'm like like backing away from her so she's like because she was getting like really close to me but she'd girl back up and she was like read this and I was like that exact tone, y'all. I'm not even reading back. She's like, read this. Look at this page. And I was like, I didn't even read it. I'm gonna y'all probably already know I was gonna say that. <laughs> like I didn't read it. I did not I care. Like Literally, like it was like this long. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't care about the job anymore. I was over it. And I looked at her and I was like, I didn't say anything. When I'm nervous, I tend to smile, which um, can be good and bad. So I was kind of smirking, which probably did piss her off a lot. But oh well. Yeah, honestly, I didn't really care, like I said. So I was like, okay. So I was kind of like, that's pretty much probably what my exact face looked like. And I was like, uh. And she goes, Sarah, go home. And I was like, for what? And this is when I started to figure it out because she pulled up the handbook and everything. So I was like, for what? And she goes, you posted on your Facebook that you don't want to be here and that this is such a bad company. And she said, in this handbook, you're not supposed to say things like that. You signed something, which I don't actually remember signing anything. That could just be my bad memory. I remember seeing something and being told, but if I didn't sign anything- I don't remember signing anything either though. No. And I would talk to my friends after I left and they were saying they didn't sign anything either. So no ma'am i didn't sign anything there are jobs that really do make you sign something and then they could fire you but this is where she went wrong i don't remember ever signing anything i remember being warned so again i got pissed off and i was like why go home i'll okay i'll come back tomorrow i actually remember i kind of started getting nervous because again i was like having anxiety i didn't feel well and i said okay i'll come back tomorrow and she goes no you're done don't ever come back <laughs> yay no <laughs> okay right like and so I freaked out and I was like, but again, like of the adrenaline, I was like kind of happy. I was like, oh my God, yes, bitch. Like, I don't have to come back here. But like, <laughs> I don't gotta deal with this place anymore. Right? And I was like, okay, cool. And then she goes, and then I, of course I had attitude because girl, it was built up inside me, let me tell you that. And she goes, you post on your Facebook and that's not allowed. And I finally, you know, me being me, I said, where's the post? Cause she had her phone out. Like she literally looked like she was gonna show me. So I was like, and she was all on Facebook, but I didn't have her. So I was like, where's the post? And she was like, I saw it. You saw it? Okay. From who? Whose account? You don't have me. And I obviously knew who it was by this point because I saw her come in and it was very obvious. But again, I wasn't gonna admit to that because why would I? And um, I was just like, okay, well, you don't have any proof. So if you try, cause she was trying to fire me and mind you, cooks and stuff are starting to look back, which again, you're not allowed to be firing someone or, um, yeah, I guess you're not allowed to actually, an HR rule book, which my dad, mom, and I all looked up that night. You're not supposed to be fighting or yelling at someone in front of other guests and trying to fire them. I didn't know that. Yeah. I found it on an actual HR handbook, which some of y'all might've known, but if your manager ever tries to do that, just know you can take them to um, court and call HR. But regardless, she was trying to fire me, tell me to never come back. Um, which also is funny because after all the things I did for them, show up on my days off, stay late, get screwed over when I wasn't supposed to close, and then you're just gonna get rid of me like that. That's why I'm saying, y'all. Try to get rid of me like that. Yeah, like it didn't work. I basically threatened to go to HR. I said that she didn't have the Facebook post. I literally pretty much got back in her face because like I said, I was just, I was over it. I'm not an aggressive person. You know that I'm like super nice, but like I was just not in the right headspace because of other things in my life going on that I just didn't care anymore. Yeah. So I got in her face and I was like, you don't have anything on your Facebook to show that I posted this. So if you go ahead and try to fire me over this, I will go to HR tomorrow. And I shit y'all not, her eyes got like this big because little Sarah never talked like that to anybody. So she was like, oh shit, like what am I supposed to do now? And mind you, I felt really bad because I don't, like I said, I don't like being like this. You probably would have felt bad, but I'm just that person. I don't like conflict. I mean, I think I would have felt bad like after it happened. Right. But like a couple years down the road, I would have been like, good. Like now after like, when I first left, I stormed out, I took my purse. The other manager who was um, up front, she was like, what's wrong? Like, I don't know if she knew, but I don't think she would have asked. 
if she did know so like she actually asked me hey what's going on because i probably looked distressed um i was so like i almost got my i almost got fired i was about to walk out i was literally about to have an hr case like i didn't know it was gonna go down i was really stressed out already from life events and she's like what's wrong sarah she's like why are you grabbing your purse so like again she probably didn't know and i was like i literally just shook my head i was like nothing like quietly and she was like you know like she was kind of like confused she's like what is going on like you're just kind of staring at me and i took my purse i grabbed my keys and i forgot my charger but whatever and i took off and then as soon as i was going to the parking lot i called her and you could ask you could literally she can testify i was like in tears when i was on the yeah. phone with you <laughs> like i don't think it was because you were sad that you lost your job you were just like adrenaline going crazy and i didn't feel well i was stressed i was she called like, me she was like freaking out and i'm in the car with my mom and i'm just like i'm like wait slow down i'm like what happened <laughs> what's going like, on why are you upset why are you crying after i got off the phone with you i called my mom and i bawled my eyes out she answered and mind you i lived like five minutes away from this place so i really didn't need to call her but i just needed to talk to someone right then and there i took my cash they luckily did let me take my money which was obviously fine and let me take my money and i was going to deposit it and i just had a breakdown on the phone with my mom because like i felt free if you've ever worked in a toxic work environment whether it was retail or service industry or even an office job i know some people that have bad bad office jobs i'm really blessed i don't and i love my people but i mean everybody's had those jobs where they just feel so drained so it's like i just felt like this whole wave of just i'm free and that proves that that work environment was just bad like if you have to feel that you're free from somewhere a relationship friendship or work environment it was toxic like you were being treated badly well and here's the thing when i got back from florida i went back to work at this place and the manager that tried to fire her wouldn't talk to me yeah. i didn't leave on bad terms i left on great terms with everybody I made sure I left on great terms with everybody so I could go back if I wanted to and she would refuse to talk to me. <laughs> she would she would go up to someone else and be like, hey, tell Brittany blah blah blah. And at some point I was just like, dude, I'm like, you're standing right there, I'm right here, like say it to my face. Are we in middle school? Like I like... did I did absolutely nothing to you. You're just pissed that my best friend called you out and, and left. almost made you get fired <laughs> and left. Like I'm not sorry. And this woman was probably like mid twenties, like almost y'all. thirty. Like yeah, I she's swear. probably almost. She probably might be thirty by now. But like, I'm like, dude, like, really? I was always nice to you. I always was on time. That just shows they really didn't care. Because anyone who's ever worked with me knows I can talk a lot, but I get distracted. But I do my job. I always try to be happy. I'm never that person that's late unless I really have a valid reason. I'm not just, oh, I went to Starbucks and I'm late. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to go, I went to the gym and I'm late. Like, I was always trying to make friends with people. I never had problems with anybody except, you know, you know who that stole from me. But that was pretty much it. Like, I was always nice to the manager. So the fact that they could just easily get rid of me after helping them for two years says a lot. They didn't care. They weren't worth like, it. No. They really weren't. It's just basically more of the story is if you're not happy in your job and you feel like you're being mistreated and you start talking, definitely talk to people first because, you know, we all have like our insecurities and we think people are attacking us. I'm very good about that when they're really not. That's just being, that's just me being me and like my anxiety. But like you could see, like, again, she would see how mean they would be to me sometimes. Like they would just, they would put me down. You don't want a manager that does that. I wouldn't. If I become a boss one day, I always promise myself I'll never be like that. That's no, just I, not good. I just I don't know how you can treat your employees like that. Like, like I, I don't know if they were on like a power trip or what, but that was way too much. I'm glad we both left. We both feel so free now. I went to. A little restaurant it's like a chain afterwards and guess what i became a server and they were always like sarah's never gonna be a server my first day serving was on valentine's day and it, at the job i had last before um, my corporate job i didn't really have that problem i pretty much liked all my managers but that's how i am right now right. i love all my managers 
Oh, I love my yeah. two It really just so. goes to show that having good managers makes you enjoy your job 10 times more exactly. than having shitty managers. Because then all you're like, you get all this anxiety and stress when you have to go to work. Because then you have to deal with them and their BS. And they would also make um, other employees talk bad about you. Like I said, they were like high schoolers. Like, it was they like would a be giant like, what about Sarah? That place? It was. It was extremely clicky. Don't get me wrong. Brittany and I did have friends there that we still love. But so y'all, we're watching this. I know some of y'all are subscribed to me. We're not talking about y'all, but. <laughs> I'm sure you know who we're talking about if you're watching this. So. Exactly. <laughs> but regardless, don't work somewhere that you feel drained at. Like, like in my, when I made that video of when I quit my job after two weeks before I got hired at my current job, I, like I said, it drained my mental health. It just wasn't a place for me. It was starting to feel like how that past job felt to me. And I was it's like, It's not no. worth the mental health stress and everything that you have to go through. No. And if you don't feel safe, don't work there. Not worth it. No. I think that's all the stories I have. Do you have another one? No, not from there. I think we've... I think we've covered everything. Covered all the... I'll probably boring. remember a story tonight and be like, shit. But, oh well. But yeah, moral of the story is, if you're not happy in your job, quit especially obviously if you need obviously people have bills to pay so like don't just quit if you seriously have bills to pay but if it's a service industry job don't tell you anybody you're looking anywhere yeah just go look for another bartending server job there's always another place out there there's always somewhere better don't stick to a crappy job that makes you feel like shit yeah like, it's so not worth it no it's really not i can tell you right now me two years ago versus me now i've never been happier working somewhere and that says a lot. Like, I finally feel in my element yeah. and I finally feel happy and actually like I'm doing something and being moved up in the first couple months you've been there is a huge accomplishment. Like, I'm so happy. I work my butt off still. Um, and Just having like your bosses acknowledge that you're doing a good job and they praise you for it, not just constantly belittling you exactly. and treating you like crap. Exactly. Like, I've never been moved up somewhere before. And if I was, like for this whole story time, it was always an issue. There was always something wrong. So the fact that I could have cried, like the fact that I got this message and my supervisor was saying that I was doing a good job and my boss was gonna switch me over to a higher queue because I answer phone calls. That just said a lot to me. Like I was like, wow, I'm actually getting recognized for hard work. And I, I literally text my parents like the screenshot and I was like crying, I was so happy. Like it literally just made my day. Cause like when you never get recognized for your work and you finally do one day. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Exactly, like it just makes you feel good. It does, like, <laughs> it really does. So always work hard and don't ever let people bring you down. You know, like I said, I never got praised for things, but I still kept working hard. I didn't ever let it get to me. Don't so. let bad people ruin your work ethic. What is that saying? It's like, don't, oh, like don't let someone dim your light or something when you're shining. That quote, but yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this really long story time. I can see how many of y'all watch and then exit out of this video. So I know it's gonna be like 45 minutes long. So if so. you stuck around to the end of this, thank you. Yeah, we yeah. like to talk a lot, okay? And we had a lot to say and this was a long awaited video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to subscribe to Brittany's channel. She's gonna do more traveling and lifestyle videos. And fitness. So, and fitness. I'm starting to rebrand my channel, so if you start to see different content, that is why. A new intro coming, probably during this video I'll have it. But yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and also DM me more video ideas, because I run out a lot. So yeah, I love you guys, bye.